I love watching that light bulb moment. I love when you are working on something and somebody gets it. Like they just, it clicks. Like you just see it and all of a sudden it's just like the whole, the whole thing has changed for them. I think the fact that the kids are just loving reading and their comprehension is getting deeper before reading, they're asking questions, during reading, they're asking questions after reading, there's those connections being made. So yeah, I think the data shows, is the evidence there. Our data was clearly showing that our kids were not necessarily understanding exactly what they were reading. When we delved deeper into the data, we actually identified that our kids were really strong at um, interpreting explicitly stated information straight from the text, um, but when it came down to actually understanding exactly what the text was asking of them, um, that's when the gaps were starting to show. We went straight to the guidebooks and the guidebooks really guided us in identifying what strategies we could be using and um, the Sheena Cameron reading comprehension strategy work is essentially what came from the guidebooks. So we wanted to make the difference for our children to make reading enjoyable and make reading fun and make those deeper connections because reading is supposed to be fun, it's not just supposed to be reading the words on a page. So we wanted to make it a fun, enjoyable, time for them as well as you know learning new strategies as well. We use um, Sheena Cameron's book across the school and we've gone from the beginning so we've been gone predicting, questioning, self-monitoring and then the connections and then our next step is vis visualisation. So we start we've started the whole school had an approach of starting it, um, with predicting and then so we each kind of try our little, little bits and pieces from that book. Everything that we've incorporated in our site improvement plan has come from a team focus. So I don't have a leadership team behind me. My leadership team is my teachers. And so when we looked at that data, we looked through those guidebooks together and we were able to clearly identify where our next steps were going to be. Getting our teachers to take risks and try something new in their classroom for us from the very get-go was a challenge. We as teachers find it very challenging to put ourselves out there to take risks and as a part of my development as a leader I was involved with a bit of work with Simon Breakspear. We as a staffing team have uh, used the teaching sprints as a way to um, essentially try something new in our classrooms. Um, the idea being that we would have a, a targeted group of kids that we want to direct this work towards. Um, we would put together a, a sprint, so we would set a goal towards those kids about trying something new in our teaching practice and those kids essentially become our, our tracking tool so that we know exactly if what we're doing is having impact in the classroom. I think having everyone on board, I mean the common language is really important so therefore you know our kids in year one when they get to year two, year three there's no new language for them, it's the common language and we're seeing the, the language of the children, that language in their learning as well so they'll say oh that's a text to world connection or those sorts of things so we don't dumb down anything, we use the examples in the Sheena Cameron book and therefore the children know what we're talking about and I think the sprints are really important. It makes you accountable for your learning, for the children's learning, and also puts you out of your comfort zone as well. And I think that's important to progress and continue as a teacher, is to push your limits. And you know, that follows on for the kids too. So I use a range of different strategies because I've got children at different levels. And so I try to tailor my lessons to accommodate everybody's learning. I try a range of strategies that incorporate visual stuff and play-based stuff so that I can help those that need that sort of learn through play or learn through visual aids that I'm accommodating for them as well. We use a range of things, I use big books, I use stuff that they have available to them at home, so it could be simple things like newspapers and magazines. We use board games and fun stuff like that that they can make connections to. Uh, we use photographs, anything that they can connect to and learn from. 
we incorporate. So I try not to focus wholly and solely just on set readers. I try to pull in other aspects as well. We were a little bit stuck at one stage with one of our strategies. We've been making connections and one of the making connections is text to world. Uh, my students really struggled to make a connection, but I found a clip on BTN, Behind the News. They connected to that about the Christmas pageant and from them, there it's just snowballed. So we've been reading the local standard has had a write up about Tail and Ben Christmas pageants being canceled. So that's affecting the kids directly now. So we've been reading about that. It's in our local little newspaper that we have, Tail and Topics. So the children have suddenly been able to connect to something that's affecting them, but it's out in the world and they didn't realise that you could do something so simple like make a connection to your world just through a little clip that we saw on, on the news. We've been able to really connect to it. it, means more to us because we've seen it on TV, now we're reading about it. It's really making more of a connection for them. So I'm gonna read this book to you called Festivals. Before I read it though, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you each a sticky note. I have got some different colors. You have got your pencil and you've got your clipboard. You are going to, as I am reading the book, you can jot down a connection. Festivals are celebrations. When we celebrate, we paint our bodies. Sometimes we sing too. When we celebrate, we dance. A national day to celebrate the survival of Australia's Indigenous people. Who's got a connection that they think they know where it goes? Yeah. Hannah's been having some really good connections this week. So I've got text to text and text to self. Okay, listening, which one are you gonna read? I'll read uh, text to self. I spend, I have spent time with my family. Okay. Good. What was the other one you cut there? I, I have watched a movie called Lilo and Stitch where, because sometimes in the movie they painted their self um, white and stuff. That's an awesome connection. What type of connection is that? The taxi text. Spot on. Well done. Give her a clap. She is awesome. Yes. I've got one student especially, she has really struggled with the whole comprehension aspect of reading and just recently she's had her light bulb moment and she's now making connections and her connections that she's making are quite deep, like she's going really to the next level of pushing herself and it's just fantastic because it's working now for her and that's really cool, like that's what we, that's what we want. A part of our success criteria within our site improvement plan is we've identified three kids in every class, one at standard one below standard and one above standard. We've also chosen one of those kids to be an Aboriginal student from each class. And essentially what we're doing is, before we're implementing the explicit instruction around reading comprehension, we're interviewing these kids on film um, to, to assess what they know coming into that um, set strategy. And then we would spend, you know, four, five, six weeks, however long it takes to successfully implement that strategy. We would then interview the students after to test them and their knowledge to see if they can articulate their understandings of those reading comprehension strategies. We have seen significant gains with our data three years ago, which is when we identified, you know, this was going to be a need for us. Our data was not where we wanted it to be. And through this whole process, we've seen some significant gains um, right throughout, so reception right through to year seven. Um, there's been some hiccups along the way and that's to be expected. And I've, from the very get-go, I've said to staff that we're gonna make mistakes and that's a part of the whole risk-taking exercise. You know, nothing's going to be perfect from the get-go because if we have the headset of, 
you know, if we al always do what we've always done, we're always going to we're always get what we've always got. And so um, we want our teachers to make mistakes along the way and learn from those mistakes to help us to get better. You need to kind of get out of your comfort zone and you need to push yourself as a teacher. You know, therefore you see the evidence of the progress with your children. So I think just give it a go, do some research. It's really important to be prepared with these sorts of lessons because you really need to kind of know what you're really talking about. So be prepared, do some, do some research and just go for it. Your children will surprise you. They really, once you start progressing through the book, they just pick up everything. And you know, what we started, you know, months ago, they're still bringing up, oh, that's, you know, I predicted this and this and this. So the common language and um, those sorts of things are really important. And so I'm really proud of them because it's their learning journey. And that's all that matters to me is that they have fun and are successful on their own learning journey. I love this whole idea around the 10 year ambition about being world class because that's what I want our school to be. I, I want our community to know that we are not just the best school in our district, we want to be the best possible school that we can be and um, I want my teachers to, to be providing the best learning opportunities in their class so that you know, my philosophy is if I've got happy teachers in, in class, I've got happy kids in class, which means kids are going home happy, which means parents are happy, and essentially I've got a happy community.